is the heating curve of water. So what that really should have looked like, we saw that you know uh, uh, being made here in the lab, is it should really look like this. Yeah. So we we only we started on the graph kind of right here, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. So and, it was, and, the, and we started with a fairly flat section. Yeah. And then we had a nice steady increase, like you see in section C here, and then we had a flat section again, like section D. Now right. we never turned it all into steam, so we never really got up to E. But yeah. So we we had B, C, and D on our graph. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to copy this. Um, this graph down in your notes. Make it nice and big. Take an entire page of paper. Yeah, and if we're going to uh, label some things. If you have a printer this. hooked up to your computer, you just might. hit pause and file print. Yeah. And uh, you can print this out and tape it in there. But we're going to add some things to this. Right. So what is true from from here to here? This is water, of course. Right. Oh, well, it's that, frozen water. It's so frozen water. So yeah. this is actually ice. So mm -hmm. we'd say this is a solid. Right. So I'll put an S right there okay. for it's a solid. So you're heating up a solid. Okay. Okay. So and that's if we, you know, stuck the thermometer in the freezer where our ice came from, it would probably be, you know, minus 20 or whatever. Yeah. And, and then, then we could watch the temperature come up. Right. Now something strange happens in section B. What, what states of matter are present? Well, we had solid and liquid present when we, as we were melting the ice and when we had the flat part on our graph. Good, so solid and liquid. Okay. okay. Then, then we had the steady increase when it was just the liquid being heated. So in section C, that's only the liquids, mm -hmm. right? And in section D... D, that's as it was going from a liquid to a gas. So both the liquid phase and the gas phase were present as we heated that up. And if we were to or somehow as a, as capture boiler, that steam as it came out mm -hmm. and were to heat it up Even separately, yeah. then this would just be a gas. Mm -hmm. So I want you to label these. Yeah. So here's the strange thing, ladies and gentlemen. The temperature does not change um, in section B. Right, and section B is the melting Yeah, area. so let's write this is melting. Mm -hmm. And yep. in section D, up here in section D, temperature does not change, and that's the boiling section. So those are the phase changes. We get a flat spot. So the energy is being used to break the bonds right. that hold the chemicals together. Right. So we're going to call this our heated up, break it up graph. Anytime the graph is going up, we are heating one phase. Anytime the graph is flat, we are breaking the bonds in a phase change. So we heat it up. When it goes up, we're breaking it up as it's flat. Oh, so I got a question, Mr. Okay. Heat it up. What section would be heated up sections? A, B, C, D, E. Tell uh, me. The heated up sections are A, A yep, C, I see that. C, and E. And E. Okay. A, A, we're heating up the solid. C, we're heating up the liquid. And E, we're heating up the gas. So, folks, you can see the temperatures rising in the heated up sections. Heated up, the temperature is going up. Right. Yeah. In the break it up section, right, what sections, sections would that be? B and D. B and D. And that's the melting and the boiling phases. The melting and the boiling phases. So the, the energy is being used, but it's not being used to warm the temperature up. It's being used to, to break the bonds. Break the bonds. Right. Okay. Good. All right. So that's important. Okay. So let's just talk about this. I, I, this is just another way to look at it. So how much during a phase change? Just a sort of an uh -huh. question. How much does the temperature change when ice is melting? It does not change. No change. No, no change. You're change. adding energy, and there's no during change. During a phase change, the energy goes to break the bonds, not to change break the temperature. Break it up. All right. So guys, here's kind of a good picture down here. If we can zoom in here, is we've got um, solids. They're all kind of cut together. Here's where it's freezing and melting in this first section, and the liquids are all kind of separated. And you see that? That's kind of a cool way to look at that. All right. And now it's big. Now it's big. Okay. Cool. What about vaporization condensation? Well, there's okay. another term, mm -hmm. kind of like fusion and, and solidification. It's something called the heat of vaporization, the energy required to turn one mole of a substance from a liquid to a gas. Okay. Now I'm guessing we're going to get a little delta H with a symbol. Oh, vape. Vape. Yep. Yeah. Vaporization. That makes sense. And its okay. number is 40.7. Now, interesting. Though, that's, that's a lot a, bigger than the six one. Yeah, that's like like five times more. Yeah. Six. Seven. Seven. Seven times. So it's a lot more energy to boil man. water. Yeah, I had to think it through. <laughs> um, so. It takes a lot more energy to boil water than it does to melt ice. Yes, it does. Because um, the bonds are stronger. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then we've also got the molar heat of condensation. Right. Now, that's condensation. just going the other direction. That, uh, that's going from a vapor to a liquid. Yeah, gas to a liquid. Yeah. And this is called delta H cond. And guess what? The number is the same except... Different sign. Different sign. Now, this is an exothermic process, meaning as, you, as something condenses, it releases quite a bit of energy, which is actually why steam burns are really, really bad. If you've ever put your hand above a pot of, of boiling water and the steam hits your hand, 
it, it hits your hand and it feels really hot. And it's not hot just because of the temperature, yeah. but as it condenses on your hand, all that energy gets yeah. released into your hand. So steam burns are pretty nasty. They're worse than just a regular hot or boil. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's kind of a, we go back to our graph here. You don't have to recopy this, but I want you to notice right here. This number here is six. That's six kilojoules, right? Mm -hmm. And this was 40. That's a four. Okay, That's 42 why or whatever. But that, this number is, this uh, graph part here is long because it takes more energy to boil the water than it does to melt no. that same ice, yep. same mass of ice. Okay. Now let's talk lastly here about how that relates to something called kinetic energy. Okay. okay so how could we label this graph for kinetic energy? All right, now we talk about something called uh, kinetic and potential energy. Let's talk about kinetic energy, Mr. Okay. Samus. What, what is kinetic, kinetic energy, energy in this is, context? Uh, well, kinetic energy is energy of motion. And when molecules are moving around, um, that's really how we get temperature. Temperature is based on the average kinetic energy. And actually, time. folks, there's actually an equation. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and copy it down. Right. Kinetic energy is 3 halves times R times T. We'll learn later on what R is, but T is temperature. So that means that the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy. Right, so all the places on that graph where our temperature is going up, kinetic energy is also going up. So from in part C here, kinetic energy is going up right here. Mm -hmm. And that would be true in A, right? Section A, and also true section E, by the way, just keep going like that. And so we would say kinetic energy is going up. But you know, in sections B, B and D, the kinetic energy we does are not, change. not changing the kinetic energy, right. but there is more energy. Right, going we're in the we're putting energy in, so we're actually increasing the amount of potential energy. Right. In so the, the potential energy goes up in section D, and also in section B. Again, what you ought to do, guys, is copy these downs and recopy. You know, put this on your graph. So there's a difference. Now, what is the difference between potential but little, and kinetic energy? Um, kinetic is uh, energy of motion. Yeah, potential yeah. energy is stored up energy. Yeah, so we should maybe define uh, potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy. And think of a candy bar, guys. A candy bar has, or a Cheeto. Mm, uh -huh. Yes. That Cheeto, that nasty Orange Cheeto. glowing goodness. Um, that Cheeto has energy in it. In its chemical bonds. In its chemical bonds. It's yeah. stored, so mm -hmm. it is considered potential energy. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand conceptually how all this works.